dude. I mean, uh, man, uh, his injury is something. Where, well, like, yeah, I have Russell Wilson. In case Josh Allen doesn't play, I have Russell I Wilson. I know. This is a stopgap. Just something, man. <laughs> yeah, it's something. <laughs> it's something. Yeah, yeah. Just something, man. That's Sometimes that's what fantasy is all about. You, you just need <sighs> something, man. You don't even need something good. Uh <sighs> And with yeah. that, guys, we're in. We're in. Come Shoot on. the gap. Oh, <laughs> the theme song is rolling. You do this to me again. Oh I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a moment the way it started with me just looking silly. All right. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome in. You found us once again. Shoot the gap. The rabbit hole fantasy football focus show here to help you to be gruntled. With your fantasy football team and your fantasy football decisions, I am your host, your humble host, Brian the Amigo Baldwin. And it's my pleasure, my honor, to introduce Connor. We got Marshall. How you doing, Connor? What's up, party people? I'm good. Thank you for introducing me as always, Brian. Now, this is kind of... I'm just going to bring up the elephant in the room. Josh Allen. <laughs> Okay. Just right let's, off the bat, dude. Josh, okay. it's like right. I, I had to get it out of my system. All right, let's, okay, let's, let's sure. just get on with it. Let's rip, rip the band-aid off. Fuck. Yeah. I, I can't even do the intro. Can I do the intro first? Yeah. And then we'll jump. In. Okay. All right. So it's our 137th show. All right, November 12th, and this hopeful year of our Lord. And today, today we'll be basically just talking about some news, and majority of it is going to be shooter cease fire. So mm. the rest of the games. Okay. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, we're cutting out the uh, well. Uh, like we're trimming it up so we can spend more time talking about the shooter sees fire. So we've noticed towards the end, uh, like when we start getting towards the end of the episode, we're just bah, 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 you know. So this way we'll be. We want to give you quality cease fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 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 fire. So anyway, anyway, the <laughs> point is, is that we're gonna jump straight into the uh, the news. Go ahead, kind of. All right. <laughs> it's Gary news. Hopefully it sounds better this time. We're trying something new, so hopefully it sounds better. All right. Okay. Okay. We did it. We did it. We did the intro. Got it in. Josh Allen, go for it. Fucking A, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Charlie. But that is how I feel right now because I have Josh Allen, and I drafted him with my number one pick in my league. And I told my boy Alec to draft him, so now I feel guilty about him having Josh Allen. And it's just, you know, if you have Josh Allen, you thought all season, oh, I'm a, I'm a genius, I'm going to win my league because I'm going to get carried by Josh Allen. And then this, this happens. But hopefully he's a big, strong farm boy, and he'll be out for a couple weeks. Luckily, I'm in first place, so I'm still going to be in the playoffs no matter what by the time he gets back. Well... Yeah, yeah, you have a very good chance of that. Um, yeah, but you also added that you're uh, that you also have Mark Andrews. Those those two were, those two yes. guys were literally carrying your team. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and now they're. Uh, well, we'll see what happens with Andrews. But next it looks week. like bet... Ezekiel Elliott keeps getting injured, so Pollard could turn into something really special for me. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter if Zeke is or not. Pa- Pollard is do well for you. But yeah, no, so, but he um, got he got fifty points in his first games. Ezekiel sat. Oh yeah, but it was also a very soft match. That's you true. Gotta, yeah, you gotta you, you gotta you gotta put it in there. But uh, but yeah, with um, with uh, Josh Allen though, uh, yeah, we we talked about it. Uh, we did talk, uh, Connor. This is his second show in a row that he's been bemoaning the uh, Josh Allen thing. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks like he'll be out. Uh, and Connor, I think you're right. It's weird because of the last the last I on the last episode I said I um. I, I watched a doctor, which I did, who said it was going to be... Uh, there's actually two... recent... Can I break... There's recent Josh Allen news. Oh, yeah. Go for it. So, Bills decided against elevating the, um, elevating a quarterback. So, they, they did not elevate a third quarterback. So, they're only coming into Sunday with two quarterbacks. So, while this is not a definite yes or no decision, what this is telling us is that they do not think that they need to go into Sunday with three quarterbacks one of them being Josh Allen, that means that this would be a sign that indicates towards Josh Allen playing. 
So there's okay. a there's a higher probability of Josh Allen starting now, given this news than before. It's not like a, oh yeah. he's playing type thing, but it, it just increased the chance a little. So hell, hell yeah, hell yeah. So you want him to play? Yes, okay. I think that I think that he is big and strong enough to still get tons of fantasy points all year and play through it. Okay. Okay. He has right. really talented wide receivers too. Well, he can yeah, make it yeah, but um, but yeah, dude, he's gonna be um, lim- <laughs> limited. But okay, whatever, man. You're uh, you're right though. If he plays, then he can't. You know, he'll just then... he'll just run more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Well, we'll get we'll get to that game uh, here a little bit. But let's go ahead and start about some players who are actually getting ruled out. Um. After not practicing one day this week. Uh, Keenan Allen has been <laughs> ruled out, okay, which is no surprise because he said he isn't going to play again until he's 100%. Um, I did. I'm not sure why they didn't put him on IR yet. I, mean, I have no idea. I um, I did some research, and apparently, whenever you uh, uh, re-injure a uh, a hamstring, then you're looking at probably about another month of recovery time. Mm-hmm. That's why with Darren Waller, why whenever he get re-injured his hamstring, they went ahead and put him in IR. Um, yeah, so, in fact, that's the next one, is uh, Darren Waller, but uh, we'll, but anyway, s- spoiler alert, we'll talk about it now, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they put him on IR because he re-injured it, and that's probably how long it takes to get 100%. Um, so, considering that um, it was, what, uh, two weeks ago, you know, that uh, Keenan Allen re-injured his hamstring, so uh, it's going to be another, yeah, yeah, it's going to be another couple of weeks, so, yeah, he's out. Uh, David Njoku, this was a, uh, a surprise only because it was um, kind of out of nowhere. Well, the, no, the positive reports were coming from Nojoku. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. But so you remember, I mean, again, I'll reiterate, dude. He he was the guy that was whenever he got the injury, he had the walking boot on and was on crutches and said, "No, I'm fine. I'll play next week." Okay, so he always wants to play. He's a football player, not a uh, not not a doctor. So, uh, though I didn't hear anything from the team saying that he play. It was all for. Najoku, but it, but yeah, that does kind of stink. Um, McCole Hardman, let's talk about this one real, real quick, uh, Connor. All right, so McCole Hardman has been ruled out. Okay, due to Adam and uh, Adam, uh, abdomen, like abdomen soreness or strain. Okay, and uh, so next up is gonna is either Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Justin Watson. Okay, um, Tony. So yeah, so do you think it's yeah? Do you think it's gonna be good for like? Tony yeah, I was gonna. Have, even even like MVS, you think MVS is going to get more em. targets? Huh? Fuck him! Oh shit! Okay, we're doing that now. It's Tony okay, Tom, yeah, bro. Okay. okay, all right, okay, all right, yeah. They, we're they traded see. for him. They had those other guys. They still traded for him. Yeah, well, they did. Yeah, they did. But it's all about the, is he um, does he know the uh, know the playbook well enough stuff like. That. But well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. It's gonna be we're gonna be able to see Tony. Um, it, put it this way, if Tony does well. Uh, tomorrow, or however you're uh, on Sunday, I should say. I should say that way. If he does well on Sunday, then I could see um, like a one of those share things happening with whenever Hardman comes back and then uh, Tony taking over. You I know, can see know. it already. The Chiefs, yeah. the Chiefs had Tyreek the Cheetah, now they have Tony the Tiger. And oh, the Chiefs are back. <laughs> there you go, Tony the Tiger. That's good. I like that. I like that. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, would you uh, put Tony in your lineup? Flex. Flex. Okay. Yeah. Would you put Would you put him over Pittman? No. Put him over Sutton. Yes. Oh. Wait. Ooh. ooh. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why I was like, okay. That's like I I'll, would. I'll play okay. him over Curtis Samuel. Yeah. There we go. There we go. That's a good line. Buff Thielen. Well, Adam Thielen against Buffalo. Ooh, I'm not going to bet against Adam Thielen because he's consistently done good. Okay. And I do think he's going to score against Buffalo. Okay. Uh, the other the other one uh, ruled out um, offensive was uh, running back Deion Jackson from Mindy. Yeah, he's always was, hurt. Yeah, yeah. But Jonathan Taylor, he practiced in full Thursday and Friday, so he should be good to go. Um, this morning, this morning, though, defensively, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick was ruled out due to appendicitis. So that's uh that that came out of the out of the blue. So yeah, poor guy. Yeah, he's going through all that mess. So yeah, hopes and or uh, thoughts and prayers to him. Thoughts and prayers. 
Yeah, but that that's going to be it's interesting though because the uh, Steelers they just get back TJ Watt and now they lose Minka at Fitzpatrick. So it's pretty shitty. Know. Yeah, it is. It's a bad timing. Um, questionable, questionable. We already talked about uh, Josh Allen. He's questionable. Um, and uh, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray hurt his hamstring last week. Uh, last week's game is listed as questionable. He's actually a game time decision. Yeah, uh, he sat out Wednesday and was limited Thursday and Friday. Um, you know, hard knocks. You, you know, you know, hard knocks, right, Connor? I love hard knocks. Yeah, they have a midseason uh, thing now. Okay, where they have like uh, hard knocks midseason, and right now they're following Arizona. Okay, so um, I actually, and so it was pretty cool because you're able to like they have them mic'd up and you can hear them talking the game. And there's actually a time whenever uh, Murray mentioned that you know that that he's they fe- he felt the hamstring. You know, like in the game it was probably about second quarter. He said that he felt his hamstring. You know, so, um, so yeah, so uh, we'll see if he plays. If he doesn't, the next man up will be is uh, Colt McCoy, and um, okay. so, um, yeah. So, what do you think is going to happen with uh, with Ertz, Rondell Moore, and D Hop? I think it's probably just going to become the D Hop show. Probably, I mean, you know, Colt McCoy, like I love him to death, but he can't really, he doesn't really have the arm that Murray has. And I feel like he's just going to kind of, like, target one guy and kind of just feed him. And, I mean, D-Hop's kind of been keeping the team alive ever since he's gotten back. He, right away, he's been the guy. Yeah, but I, it doesn't I, – I don't, I don't think it's going to be a good thing, like you're saying. I think it's a downgrade for all, all the players. That's just my opinion. I think, um, I, I think that you're – what I'm saying is D-Hop is still going to get the lion's share, though. Okay. I mean, sure. I, mean, I know that the last time we saw Colt McCoy, I think, was in Cleveland, right? No, yeah. he's he's backed up in Arizona before. Okay, okay. That's kind of what right. happened. Okay, all right. Before, uh, we'll... like, okay. like, 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 D, like he he fed D Hop. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go. There's 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 hope, I guess, for D Hop managers, but uh, I I think it's a it's it's not a good thing whenever Colt McCoy comes in. It just doesn't sound. Well, who right. knows? Maybe he, maybe he watches game film against Seattle's defense. Oh, that's funny. I, I see where you are. Yeah. Um, in the in the same game, uh, Matthew Stafford placed into the concussion protocol on Tuesday, and was held on, held out on Wednesday and Thursday, and had a limited practice on Friday. Um, and it's but it's anytime there's like a concussion protocol, it does seem like that no, that somewhere in the rules either it's stated or just understood. Uh, you know, I'm serious. It seems to me that if you have a concussion, you're going to miss at least a week. Does that sound about right, man? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't play, then John Wolford, okay, will be the one uh, that will be that will be throwing the ball. Um, I just get right before we recorded those a um, a sleeper notification that the Rams are preparing for him. So yeah, it looks like it's going to be John Wolford. So uh, what's that going to be for? Uh, um, Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby. I mean, what do you think? And keep in mind that that the Arizona defense is one of the worst defenses against tight ends. So, what do you think? Probably just gonna be the Cooper Cup and I guess tight end show. Yeah, I yeah I think that it's gonna be, but it's gonna be a less accurate thrower. So it's yeah, he's not as accurate. So I think it'll like think the only completion. The most completions are going to probably be at the tight end because he'll be out in the flat. That's where he'll be thrown to. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably the best. The best uh, thing. Cooper Cup was probably taking a. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's going to take a little. Yeah, a little hit. Uh, James Conner. James. Conner, um, uh, he's also somebody that could probably uh, do well with Wolford because they might throw to him more. We'll see. Um, so uh, the ones that are playing that were questionable: Damian Pierce, practice in full on Friday after getting limited uh, practices on Wednesday and Thursday, so it looks like that was maintenance. Uh, same thing with um, Henry. Uh, yeah, Derrick Henry. They, uh, but whenever he's, he's they rest, play, but when they rested him, they straight up said that that he's not playing DNP, and they put rest. None of this like made up like injury thing. They just straight up said rest. Okay, so he was rested. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. We already know that he's going to be playing. Uh, DeAndre Swift. Let's talk about DeAndre Swift. He can't a stay bit. healthy, bro. Yeah, but uh, he's 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 gonna be playing. He's gonna pl- be playing. He only took like five snaps, I think, last week. 
But the uh, head coach, Dan Campbell, said on Monday that they hope to give uh, Swift a, a quote-unquote a little bit more work Sunday. You know, so... Uh, um, and there was reports, actually, uh, uh, that uh, that Swift was um, frustrated by the lack of his playing time. He was a full par- practice participant on Friday, so... Um, he was limited Wednesday and Thursday, so would you would you go ahead and and start uh, DeAndre Swift with confidence? Yeah, I feel like you have to. It's so hard to come by good running back options. Now keep in mind he's he's the between the twenties guy now. Okay, that you know Jamal Williams is is the one that's getting like that valuable goal. I know, I know. I have I have him in, in my auction league. I've I've been tracking his. His progress all season. He's Jamal Williams is probably the superior option to have. Okay, uh, yeah. I, I would. I mean, I would start. I, I would start both guys. Okay. The, the 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 Lions use their running backs a lot. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I I I just would be real. I'm just. It's one of those things, man. Where last game he he only touched the ball five times. So how many times have we heard that before? We're gonna you know go to X person more. We're gonna throw more to him. He's gonna get more carries. I trust I trust Dan Campbell. I I like Dan Campbell. Yeah, but dude, I mean, okay, but a little bit more. A little bit more than five carries is what ten. Yeah, but the problem is Swift is so explosive. Okay, look, like I'm starting Najee probably over Swift because. Of the floor difference, but Swift still has a higher ceiling, and I think a hey. lot of people. Okay, but if you you really seem to care about this, I don't even really care that much. Let's just move on. Okay, okay, I I, I do. I I, I like uh, DeAndre. Um, no, I'm just like I'm just the not. You, yeah, you're very opinionated. Yeah, yeah let's let's yeah. keep it moving. We have to do the. Well, we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, Zeke Zeke was the last as the last one I want to talk about. I hope he uh, doesn't play. Team President Jerry Jones said earlier Friday that he expected Elliott to play Sunday, um, but he did admit that the Cowboys still need to see how the running back felt coming out of the team's final practice of the week. Um, so he ended up being a limited practice uh, participant for on the third for a third straight day on Friday, and possibilities for the Sunday, including him if he is active, he might have a smaller than usual role. So that's a good good news for Tony Pollard. Um, so. See how that that goes. All right. Okay. Okay. So I I, I think I got everybody. Uh, but before we get, uh, do you have anybody you want to add as far as like in that Say realm? Law. Okay. So before we get to the rest to rest of the shooter ceasefire for week ten, let's get a word in from our supporters. Yeah. I volume music radio. The pride of Sunnyside, with shows like Rock and Roll Radio, Bring Back the A-Track, The Brown Sugar Express, and Blame It on the Boogie with Amp Boogie. Log in now at highvolumeradio.com. And remember, if it ain't high volume, it ain't loud enough. Now back to Shoot the Gap with your host, Brian. The Amigo Baldwin. And we're back. All right. Okay. Let's go in. Now we're going to go and jump to uh, the uh, straight into the shooter sees fire for week 10. And uh, we'll do what. Um, go ahead, Connor. Go and you, you uh, introduce it. Then we'll. Uh... All right. Now we've seen a lot of bullshit over the last 10 weeks of fantasy football. And now, in the 10th week of the season, we're going to see a lot more. First up, we have... Is this a Germany game? What what is this? I don't know, but we have the Seattle Seahawks and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers have been playing like they have tampons in their Tampa Bay, and we're going to see if Giselle's magic is really going to keep cursing them. It's a 45-point over-under with the Bucs as two-and-a-half-point favorites. Yeah, this is a Munich. Okay, this is definitely a Munich. Yeah, so it um, it's actually forecast to be 55 degrees, 14 percent chance of rain, and five to 10 mile an hour winds. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. The quarterbacks, um, Geno Smith. Of course, you're going to play. G- uh, he he hasn't shown any reason why he shouldn't. So yeah, I mean, he's the QB nine. So of course, I go and shoot at him. Uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. How you feeling about Brady? 
Yeah, I feel like you start him unless you have a uh... shoot on him. You mean? Come on, dude. Yeah, you shoot on him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the bit. Him. You're right. This isn't the bit I'm the best with. I would shoot on. I, I know you're not as on him as I am, but I would shoot on Fournette too. Oh no! No way. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. But um. But we'll we'll get there. Uh. Seattle is earning the 12th highest yards per attempt and 11th highest passing t- uh, touchdown rate overall this season to QB. So yeah. Tom Brady. Uh. Tom Brady. I think is somebody that you can shoot on. Um, the running backs, Kenneth Walker. I mean, you're not going to go. I mean, there's nothing to say about that, which I'm still astonished by. Everybody. I mean, I'm seriously Kenneth Walker still somebody. I just, I just can't believe it. I mean, the dude, the dude was, uh, I mean, I know he was great in college and everything like that, but he was uh, hurt. You know, he had a hernia, you know, hurt his chest, you know, Rashad Penny, you know, couldn't get, get anything going behind this line. I mean, it just, wow. I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Fournette, though. Leonard Fournette. Um, so what are you expecting out of Leonard Fournette? When you say shoot on him, uh, what are you expecting? 10 to 17 points. So RB2 number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then that's – then, then yeah, I, 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 can, I can get behind that. Okay. I wouldn't say, like, to go ahead and cease fire because I, – I would say cease fire on the idea of an RB1 numbers or what, what you drafted him to be. But yeah, as far as an RB two, yeah, I can see that. The problem is just Rashad White is starting to get more and more targets. Well, starting I have to get more him and more too. Snaps. I have him in the rare in the rare instance that Fournette goes down or isn't the lead guy anymore. But I still yeah. think Fournette's the lead guy for now, and Tom Brady's going through it. He's he needs him. He's going to throw to him. Speaking of throwing to guys, let's talk about the wide receivers, the tight ends. Okay. Yeah, um, the uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. I mean, those I'm starting are guys. both of them. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, there's no reason. I mean, like, you'll you'll hear me just glance over names like that because seriously, I don't think you're really gonna cease fire on them. I mean, you're you're not. You're not. You sh- or you shouldn't. I, I, I do think it's more important to talk about who we're shooting on the cease firing on though. Uh, what about the the box? Well, no. There's there there there's there is a reason. I mean, you need to give reasons why you'd cease firing. Um, the, uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, uh, those, uh, you know, those are guys that, you, again, if you have them, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna play them. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, uh, sit them. I gotta sit the guy, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but, uh, God, Godwin, that's, that's the one that's gonna be the most exciting between the two. I mean, what I've been hearing is that, you know, he's screaming regression, you know, like t- touchdown regression, you know, so, you know, here it comes, this one's gonna happen, but we hear that all the time. But uh, you would start on the way you would, you know, you, you know, a, a good, strong. Each one of them are a good, strong wide re- wide receiver two with Gus up to to wide receiver. You like how I did that? You know the yeah Gus. You know <laughs> yeah yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. That they have they have the ability to they they could do. Russell Gage, Julio Jones, about it. Uh, tight ends, tight ends. Um, the you know Seattle's one of the worst against tight ends. So. Would that make you play Cameron Bright with confidence because he's back now, or no? I mean, what do you What do you look at as far as the tight ends on uh, in both in both the guys? Uh, I'm both, not both. starting any tight ends in these games. Okay, okay. Well, well, I mean, I understand. I can understand Seattle because you just don't know between Fant or Disley who's gonna you know, who's gonna do it. But um, is that the way you're feeling with Bright? I mean, you don't think? Yeah, I mean, he got, the he other, got a full week of practice. Full yeah, week of the practice. other guy's still there. Otten. Yeah, um, okay. It might okay. be a commit. It might be a similar thing with the Seahawks. Yeah, I, I would just how it's two guys, you know. If yeah, if if he was, if he had one week under his belt, then I would go ahead and shoot on Cameron Braid. It just you know being off for this long time, coming back, you know, it just I'm, I'm always scared of that terrible like re. So yeah, I would yeah. I would agree with you. Cease fire. So let's move on. Next game. All right, the Minnesota Vikings and the Buffalo Bills is the game of winter. It's a 44.5 point over under with the Bills as 6.5 point favorites. Although, okay, so Vegas thinks that Josh Allen's going to play too. That's interesting. Did they say that? Like you like you spoke to Vegas? Yeah, like you're texting they Vegas? They said that the Bills are winning by 6.5 point favorites. That's a pretty hefty... The Vikings are seven and one. They have a better record than the Bills, so they're no they're no chumps. Although 
they, they, I feel like they kind of are deep inside. Let's 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 talk about it. Who who, who are you starting? I think it's the, the simple fact is what I'm about to say. Um, it's it's forecast to be 41 degrees. Okay, uh, and there's actually 24 percent chance of snow showers, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds. Now. The reason why I'm saying like that one statement is the reason why Vegas is favoring them is because Minnesota is a dome team. Anytime you have a dome team going into some weather, then you should always bet on the the, the non dome team. <laughs> okay, so uh, Kirk Cousins, um, I'm I just can't uh, I I can't say to recommend to shoot on him uh, against the Buffalo defense. Doesn't it just seems like it's gonna be low end QB one numbers at best. You can probably find that somewhere else. You know, uh, there's there's better streamers. You know than than him. Uh, Josh Allen. We were talking about before the show um, that if he does play, then yeah, go ahead. I mean, you have you have to. I mean, if you're a Josh owner, I mean, for some for somebody who's not somebody who's not, I I would not play him. But I haven't been depending on you have. So it's a big it's a big. Uh, it's a big gut punch for him. It would be really so. cutesy to try to start Russell Wilson against Tennessee instead of... I, I, I see the pathway, but that's some real cutie, cutesy shit. I might do it. <laughs> I might do it. I might think about it, you know, because it's just... Dude, I'm telling you, man, the the, the, the thing he has... He had it last, last year. He was... Uh, or four years ago, excuse me. And he was out for a while, and... I don't know. I, I don't know if you've ever banged your funny bone, right? Just your funny bone, right? That that in itself kind of hurts. But think about that being pinched by your bone, okay? By your actually elbow bone. I That's what you. he's going through. I got That's you. what he's going through, man. It doesn't matter how man you are. Drugs dude, are I mean. drugs are powerful, but uh... okay, okay, we'll see. That's probably what it is, dude. That's exactly what it is. They're gonna give him a shot, and then we'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, dude. So, like they... he's a six and two. Like he's a soldier. He's not losing. He's not losing his Super Bowl season to some fucking tennis elbow bullshit. He's going to do what it takes to win. Oh, God. Uh, to be young again, to think that you know you actually have control of your body. Okay, so Case Keenum, if he plays, if Josh Allen doesn't play, I wouldn't look at Case way. Keenum, more like Case Screenum, because that's the type of pass that he likes to throw. He does not have an <laughs> arm like Josh Allen. Okay, I agree with you on that. Uh, or accuracy. Uh, Dalvin He's not Cook. very accurate. Yeah, the running backs, Dalvin Cook. We don't need us. Of course, you put him in the lineup. You're an idiot um, if you're not starting Dalvin Cook. Devin Singletary, Naeem Hines. How do you feel about that? I feel like uh, not talking about them. Oh, so you wouldn't even start him? Uh, I would start Singletary. That's the only Bills running back I would start. Hines has yeah. to prove it to me. Like I'll roster, I'll roster Hines, and I'll even roster uh, James Cook, but I'm not going to start either of them. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. Um, like the the Vikings though, they're pretty tough against the run. They're ranked third, you know. Um, yeah, I'm it. I'm just going with Singletary because of the weather. Like you said, it's gonna, they're gonna be a, a an open game, and it's gonna be cold and raining. So you know, yeah, th- this yeah, and I, no, I got you. Yeah, got you. well, if it does rain, it's gonna snow. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a um, a, 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 a run game, a heavy run. Yeah, game. but. But Naeem Hines, I would not. Uh, no, you gotta wait. You gotta wait to see what, yeah, what yeah. they're gonna do with. But don't drop them. Yeah, don't. No don't roster. Do. Yeah, have them. Have them on. Have them on your bench. Wait for them to do good. You know, if you're in, uh, if you're in to keep a league, even better. Yeah, we uh, Justin Jefferson. <coughs> he's, he's in. Uh, Savon Diggs, of course, is in. The uh, the ones the on the outside. You know, those are the ones that that are a little nerve wracked. Adam or, Thielen. Adam you, Thielen you said, and Gabriel Davis. Yeah, so you would say you would. Uh, since you're since you're forecasting Josh Allen, plays. so if Josh Allen plays, then um, then Adam Thielen is fine and Gabriel Davis. Yeah, I think that Adam Thielen is actually he would be fine either way because Adam Thielen he's the slot guy. He runs a lot of shorter routes, so I think he's actually this. I don't think that this type of weather would affect his game as much because he would be TJ. doing the shorter passes. Okay, and Davis, you already said earlier, if Allen plays, put him in. If not, then don't. Yeah. Uh, DJ Hawkinson or TJ Hawkinson? Yeah, or- I'm starting Hawkinson until he proves me wrong. I'm 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 ranking him as a tight end one. I'm I'm giving him uh, the benefit of the doubt because I know he has yeah. the I know he has the talent. Well, I mean, an opportunity. So um, that that was the one that I was. That's what concerns me with Thielen, TJ Hawkinson. You know, because he kind of. That's kind of the area that Thielen. 
you know? So Yeah. You know what's beautiful is if you think about it, the A- the NFC North is perfectly ganged up against the Packers. <laughs> because the Bears went out and got Claypool when the Packers were trying to do it. And the Lions gave the Vikings a stud tight end to make sure that the Vikings won the division this year and the Packers did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dawson Knox, uh, he hasn't done anything. I'm not starting him. He hasn't done anything to make you think that, you know, especially if if, if Allen's. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the defense is, you know, business as usual. I would go ahead and, and I'm in Minnesota, I guess, you know, if you need to stream something that they're, ah, I don't know, dude. I would. If I would not Josh, stream Minnesota's defense. If, if Josh stream. Allen doesn't play, yeah. then Minnesota v Vikings. I would go ahead. Yeah. But Bu- Buffalo, you're going to put in one way or the other. All, All right. right. Move on. To the Speaking next one. of the NFC North, the Detroit Lions are playing against the Chicago Bears. The age-old question: Lion versus Bear. Well, you got it. It's a forty-eight and a half over under with the Bears as two and a half point favorites. All right. Um, thank you for not going for that. Oh my, that that's very cool of you. For for uh, for, for the what? Well, you know the lions and tigers and bears. And oh, the the lion. Oh no, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm better than that. Didn't yeah, even yeah, cross yeah. my mind because I'm no. from the from the dome, like like M M&M. and M. Easy, easy there. Thirty eight <laughs> degrees, two percent rain, ten to fifteen mile an hour wind. So it's gonna be cold, but uh, that's about it. Um, this is another um, another what dome team going to a cold weather. So we just talked about that a second ago. Um, this one's going to be pretty easy. To be honest with you, I don't think we're going to need to dwell on this one too 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 much. Um, Jared Goff with the uh, with the easy with the weak um, Chicago defense. Would you go ahead and uh, shoot on him? Yeah, I'm shooting on both. I'm I'm thinking this is going to be a high scoring game. Uh, Vegas agrees. One of the higher over unders this week, uh, and I'm taking the over on it. I'm starting Justin Fields. I'm starting uh, Claypool. I'm I'm shooting on Claypool. Easy, I'm shooting dude. On hang Fields. on, hang, dude. We're doing sections, here, and I'm. In, I literally just asked you one question. Well, I got excited. <laughs> yeah. I got excited. Okay, okay, okay well, then we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, the, the the both both quarterbacks are in play here. With Justin Fields, I think is gonna have a fantastic game. Yeah, I'll start uh, we, off too. We, yeah, we spoke about the running backs already for Detroit. So you know, we, when we news, we spoke about that. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Connor feels that Swift is startable. I don't. Yeah. Um, and then not but even for both, this game. No, no, and no, no. Uh, do cold weather and injuries? Dude, oh, you think on, this man. is this is the Jamal Williams show? Yeah, dude. I mean, dude, look, man. Well, that's I'm good old. for my. That's good for my uh, my auction league team. Yeah, listen to me, man. I'm old, and I, I have you know, but I, I've picked up a few injuries along the way. I know what cold weather does to injury. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it does not make it feel better. <laughs> okay, so I I just yeah, it's um, it just doesn't seem like it. Yeah, if he does play, it's going to be on a limited basis and not enough to where you, not what you're expecting. You should have better options out. There. Uh, David Montgomery, uh, Khalil Herbert, um. Both of these guys, I recommend them as both of them you shoot on. Am I because against they're playing against the Detroit defense? You know, but it's it's easy for both players to do well. You know, so I I think that they're that it's basically fire up all bears. That's what I'm. That's what we're basically saying. Here. You know, just all the bears go ahead and um, get them started. Same thing with the with the um, uh, with the wide receivers on the Detroit uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. I would go ahead, but you know. The, the Raymond, you know, Khalif Raymond, no, and I, of course, Josh Reynolds has already been ruled out. So you, so go ahead, Connor. We're here. You're happy about it. You're excited. Talk about Chase Claypool. I'm really excited about Chase Claypool, bro. I feel like he's going to be a really good addition to the to the Bears team. And I thought that the production was really exciting. I'm starting. I'm shooting on him, and I'm shooting on Mooney. I'm shooting on both wide receivers for this game, and I'm oh, yeah. shooting on Cole Komet. Okay, All right. I'm feeling <laughs> saucy. Yeah, no, you're just going to you're just going to you know uh, 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 step forward, which is great. It's fine, it's actually a good segue. Yeah, uh, Cole Komet definitely. Um, the other tight end, it's not even somebody even worth roster. Troy, so don't even play that game. Yeah. It wasn't the it wasn't the position that was so good. It was the fact that T.J. Hawkins was so. Good. Um, but Cole Komet, I think he would be like a low end tight end one, high end tight end two. So that's definitely something to that is startable. Um, you know, uh, shoot worthy, I should say, you know, in this day and age, uh, of tight ends, I should say. 
Um, uh, the as far as the defenses, of course, we're we're talking very highly of the offenses because the defense is so bad. So don't even look at in that direction. All right, let's move on. Moving right along, we have the Denver Broncos of the Tennessee Titans. One of these teams we thought was going to be good and is bad, and the other we thought was going to be good and is mid. It's a 39 over under with the Titans as two and a half point favorites. What is the Titans' record? They're five and three. That's 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 mid. Yeah, uh, mid. 46, 46 degrees, four percent chance of rain, five to ten miles. Uh, yeah, when, uh, yeah. Um, the quarterbacks. Let's talk about that. Um, Ryan Tannehill, I know, or even uh, Willis. He no, starts. yeah, neither. Guy. Yeah, Russell Wilson's the only one. He's kind of a borderline QB one, in my opinion. Uh, the Titans. <laughs> They um they ranked seventh in fantasy points per game allowed to quarterbacks, twelfth in yards per attempt, and tenth in passing touchdown. So um, this and you're talking about a rested Denver team, you know. So I I think it's going to be a uh, it's going to be I, I would I would say you can go and shoot on Russell Will. I I, I would say you could. I say you could. I myself like I said before I would do that over Josh Allen. We'll see. If, I mean, laugh at me if you like. You know, we'll see what uh, what the games game time, bring, time will but, tell. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely it will. Uh the running backs, um, I wouldn't even look in the direction of Denver, the the Tavis Murray, Chase Edmonds, Melvin Gordon. Uh, let's just see what happens. Oh, don't even look that way. Derrick Henry, of course. We don't need to talk about that. Wide receivers are the one that's that's really interesting. Not on the Titans side, you know. <laughs> because basically the only person you're gonna sh- you're gonna start shoot on, on Titans is Derrick Henry. Move along. Um Russell Wilson, yes. What do, what do you think? I mean, Jerry Judy, I mean, he's done enough to prove that he, actually he's taking over as the wide receiver one yeah. in Denver. So um, so you would go ahead and shoot on him in this. In this I already gave you those one stats. But Cortland Sutton, how do you feel about Cortland Sutton? Uh, it's, a, it's not a press shoot I'm proud of, but I'm still shooting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, ask him for a friend. Cortland Sutton or Michael Pittman? Uh, Michael Pittman. Interesting. Okay. All right. And how do you feel about? Um, yeah. I. I. Um. I. I. Here's my feeling. Here's my feeling. All right. This is. Um. With Court and Sutton. I mean, like, if he doesn't score in this matchup, then he's basically somebody that probably you can you can never use again. You know, you can't. I mean, he's broken because uh, this is a great matchup. They're coming off a bye. You know, so this usually te- the teams. Teams are supposed to use buys to get right. So let's just see. And Corbin Sutton and, you know, Wilson's supposed to be like, you know, going to church together. You know, they do this together and they're supposed to be buds and all that. But we'll see. We'll see. The the, the bye week which will show. So this is the time. This will this will be the definitely. We'll see if you can ever play Corbin Sutton again. Um, how do you feel about Greg D? Uh, Greg Del- Delchich from uh, tight end for the Broncos. Yeah, start him, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's uh he's something. Yeah, so I right, right, do you do you do you feel any remorse I mean for not going after him and picking him up? Yeah. Just Which, like uh yeah. likely. I'm I'm mad I got beat to that. <laughs> That's because you got mad and turned off the game, Connor. That's no, what I was I was watching it. No, you didn't. You turned off the game as soon as Andrews was hurt. <laughs> did I tell you that? Yes, you did. No, that's not what you, I was at no, I, I saw like the next. Uh, I, I I saw likely catch the touchdowns. Okay, all right. Yeah, that, that was an exaggeration. Because I was okay. That's what you text. You're like, I'm gonna go drink or like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so yeah. So I've been. I was watching. I was like, oh my gosh, you got an actual handcuff. Look at that. Right. All right. Um. Um. Did we talk? Do we need to talk about? Yeah. The defenses. The uh, Denver and Titan defense. How you feeling about those guys? I feel like neither of them are worth starting in this okay. game. I could I could feel that, especially since yeah. that big trade for Denver that kind of down. I agree with you 100 percent on that. All right, move on. All right, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Kansas City Chiefs are battling it out. It's a 51 point over under with the Chiefs as nine and a half point favorites. 42 degrees, four percent chance of rain, five to ten mile an hour. So cold. But uh, that's about it. So let's talk about it. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Patrick Mahomes. Of course, you don't need to talk about Patrick Mahomes. 
Trevor Lawrence, how are you feeling about him against the suspect Kansas City defense? I'm starting him. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah I think he'll, I think he'll definitely be borderline QB1. Yeah. Uh would would you um Trevor Lawrence or Russell Wilson? Uh gosh. I want to say Russell Wilson, but I feel like isn't the Chiefs defense even more suspect? Ah, uh, well the Chiefs they force you to throw. I mean, because their offense is so prolific. Mhm. So, um yeah, in that in this case, ah, man, that is a tough one, right? Yeah, um yeah, I would say uh uh, yeah, I would go Russell. I would go Russell because I'm worried about Trevor Lawrence. He's done some numbskull decisions, especially by the goal line. You know, he's he's thrown a lot of intercep- interceptions by the goal line. And that's those are killer, especially against Patrick Mahomes. You know, you start doing that, you're never going to get back in the race. You know? So, uh, running backs, Travis Etienne. Don't even talk about that. I mean, he's RB one now. Um, the running backs for the uh, Chiefs. Pick one, Connor. Uh, Jared McKinnon. Ah, interesting. Okay, okay. You're right. He played a season high 62% of snaps, nine touches, and 44 yards last game. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, Eclair, uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, he's on your bench. Isaiah Pacheco on your bench. Um, Jared McKinnon, I guess, flex? Yeah, that's that's okay. a good, yeah. yeah. Jared McKinnon or Cortland Sutton in your Oh, play? Cortland Sutton. Ah, Finally. Gotta go lightning flex. <laughs> okay. Uh, the wide receivers, of course, uh, t- go, ahead t- go ahead and talk about it. Uh, yeah, for the Chiefs, um, I mean, we already talked about Tony the Tiger. I um, feel like you got to start him. It's kind of the only Chiefs guy I trust. I mean, the wide receiver one is still Travis Kelsey. And I, f- I feel like, you know, we all understand that you're, you're starting him if you have him. Uh, oh, yeah. he, for Jacksonville, um, I mean, I don't know about you, Brian, but I, I kind of feel like it's just Christian Kirk and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. And, and then e, just, e, 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 Etienne, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, gloss, I glossed over him. Yeah, but those are the only two. Those guys and you know, Trevor, I feel like those three guys, maybe, I mean, are maybe Evan Ingram. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I feel like he's kind of been low mids at best. Stream. Yeah, he's, yeah stream. Yeah, yeah. Stream if you're week. desperate. Stream if you're, if right. you're strung out. Uh, Cole Komet or Evan? Ooh, Cole Komet all day. Okay. Uh, but Juju Smith-Schuster, man, he's the wide receiver 22. Okay, in fantasy. Ah, uh, yeah, um, but hasn't a lot of those points come from two games? Well, uh... Um, no, he had two big games where he had, like, 100... He had, like, a... I remember because I had him in Freedom. And in Freedom... In Freedom, you get more points for 40-yard touchdowns. And he got two... In like back to back weeks, and then I, I don't think he's done that much the rest of the season. I think that was like, like that was since, his production since week six. Since week six, he has he he has oh been, he has he has had three good weeks in a row. Since week six, he's what wide receiver seven, wide receiver four for the week, and then wide receiver eight. Yeah, right, the last three games, he had five targets, eight targets, and 12 targets. He caught those for 113 a touchdown, 124 in a touchdown, and 88. Yeah, so, so I don't know how you sit that. How do you sit that? <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, you got you to gotta start that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, Tony was the one, I mean, um, he's the one that, that I mean, I'm excited for. I'm excited for, but I've been excited before and got burned in fantasy. So I, I just, I would, I would, if you, if you're in a situation, I would go and. But do uh, I try to uh, trade back for Juju? Yeah. Well, you're not gonna get him for Najee. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he isn't starting. He isn't starting. Uh, Juju. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I hope he doesn't because I'm playing against. Keep I'll I'll, I'll leave him I'll leave him alone. Yeah, I won't thank mess with you. Them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep us being um, keeping the streak alive. I think that's all the players on these teams, right? Yeah. What about the defenses? No. Uh no, because no. Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Move on. Yeah. Um. Uh, speaking of another game where we're probably not going to start either defense, uh, the <laughs> Cleveland Browns up against the Miami Dolphins. 
I think this is going to be an exciting game. Uh, it's going to be a 49 over and under. The Dolphins is three and a half point favorites, a little lower than I expected. I'm, I'm definitely taking the Dolphins in the over on that. Okay. Um, 84 degrees, 17 percent rain, five to 10 mile an hour wind. So just a beautiful day to play football. Um, the the uh, yeah, I, let's go and get it out of the way. Yeah, the defenses. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go actually hear the defense. Yeah, let's just let's just go and talk about that one. Get that one out of the way. Uh, the quarterbacks, though, uh, Tua, I think, I mean, Tua, we don't necessarily, I mean, he's going to have a great, great game, I think, this week. I mean, he has a very high weekly ceiling to begin with, but um, he, he's been a top four quarterback. But now, dude, I mean, it's going to go against that Cleveland defense. And I defense. got him on waivers in my one of my teams. Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, um, Brock is looking like a genius. I was clowning him earlier about trading Gabe Davis for Tua, but now he's look, look, looking like a genius. Um, Jacoby Brissett, would you go ahead and uh, shoot on him? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, I would say um, QB2 numbers with a gust of, of QB1s, you know? Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Running backs, Nick Chubb, of course. Um, and Kareem Hunt, Jeff Wilson, uh, and uh, Russ, Raheem Mostert. Out of those three, who would you want to start? Real? Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be an RB2. Um, yeah, he's like we already talked about RB2 numbers, but he's going to – seems to have just come over and taken over the backfield. <laughs> like just push – you know, told Mostert, like, hold my beer. And here we go. <laughs> here we go. You know? Yeah. Um, it, yeah, but they but they actually both uh, – they, they both um, shared the snaps right down the middle, 31% each. Yeah. Um, but Jeff Wilson had 13 uh, routes, and Raheem Mostert had 12. And uh, Re- Jeff, but Jeff Wilson had five red zone opportunities. Mostert had two. So yeah, I could see that. If you're talking about just straight up, Jeff like, Wilson red zone, was the red zone guy when he was in San Francisco. Out of those three guys, who's got a bigger, best chance to score? Jeff. Wilson. I like that move. I like that move. Um, is are any of those guys flex worthy? Hunt and Mostert. Moster is flex worthy. Hunt is not. Okay. Wide receivers. Uh, Mari Cooper. How you feeling about him? Start, set, and forget. Um, how about Donovan Peoples Jones, dude? He's been doing really well. I mean, you know, he's been a wide receiver 33, wide receiver 34, wide receiver 4, finished with at least 70 yards in four of his last five games. I mean, 19% of the target share. What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I guess you can stream that. It'll probably change when, uh, you know, uh, Ben Roethlisberger 2.0 comes in. But until then, you can probably roll with him. Yeah, but see, again, that's not going to be until later on in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah I'm, t- I'm telling you, man, it's going to take a lot, lot of Webbles, huge Webbles, to play Don Peoples Jones or play um, Deshaun Watson in the uh in the playoffs it really is in my opinion so yeah rough um tyreek hill yes jalen watson waddle of course um so yeah those those the yeah so apparently what uh what we're saying here is to shoot on all the wide receivers uh just donovan people jones is more of a flex than anything Mm -hmm. uh tight ends we already know about njoku uh what about kasiki yeah okay he has the ceiling. Uh, He's this is a <clears throat> it's a very boom bust, but you got to chase that dragon. That's what I'm saying. He's very volatile. So you know what you're getting yourself into. You're playing with you're playing with fire. That's what's like, yeah, you're doing just, heroin. Yeah, you're doing something. You're doing something. All right, move, yeah, moving on. Moving right along, we have one team that is awesome playing against the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans are playing the New York Giants. The Giants was six and two. It's a forty-one and a half over under. The Giants is four and a half point favorites. This one, yeah, uh, it's uh, the forecast is fifty-two. I have the shower. Giants defense. I'm I'm excited about this game. Showers in the a.m. Yeah, cloudy in the afternoon. Yeah, so ten to fifteen miles or what? Okay. Um. Yeah. The 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 defense is okay. Um. So you're you the go ahead go ahead since you jumped into it. I meant. Yeah, you're, you're, I have the Giants defense, bro. I'm excited. I feel like they're gonna score big numbers against the Texans. All right. Uh. Now New York is 26 in rushing yards per game, 25th in uh and yards per attempt, 28th in explosive rate run allowed. So 
Uh, you know. <laughs> That's your very like, passive aggressive way of saying Damien Pierce is going to do awesome, but the David Mills can still well. turn over the ball a lot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. he's excellent. That's one thing he does do great. Uh Daniel Jones is he somebody that um you could put in there? Uh you know, last time I ch- I've uh, streamed him was against the Jags and he got me a lot of points. Uh you could probably do the same thing against the Texans in this one. Daniel Jones or Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. Uh, Daniel Jones or Trevor Lawrence? Daniel Jones. Interesting. Saquon, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. You're starting. You know, same thing with Damian Pierce. You're starting. Him. The ones that, that you need to talk about, we need to talk about are the, don't need to talk about any tight ends. There's really no tight ends of, of consequence, so don't even need to waste breath on that. But wide receivers. Let's talk about the wide receivers, man. Uh, Brandon Cooks. What are you doing with him? You you bench him or you you drop him? Wow, I wouldn't drop him. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't play him either until you see what's going on. See if he gets his uh, if they can uh, if they can smoke the peace pipe, you know, with the with the Texans. But you saw before, I said this before, I'll say it again that the Texans, if they have a disgruntled, you know, if they have a franchise disgruntled player, they don't care. They'll let him sit. They don't let they'll let him sit, especially with the fact that. Now the Texans, it's more advantageous for them to lose games than it is for them to win. You know, I could see that happening. I still don't know. It still baffles me that they didn't. I mean, that's just, I just can't believe they didn't trade him. That was just wrong yeah. on so many levels. Yeah. So many levels. There's mm-hmm. nothing right about it. It's just wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nico Collins is um, trending to play. They're not sure, but no and these I, are, I, these, I are deep, these are deep cuts with me i mean before i'm being honest no one's looking at the texans for streaming well, options for wide receiver 12 man they are 12 man they are i've had i've had these conversations already with people with 12 man. um but uh I mean, 10 man no, you not. i mean the, the giants aren't even that worth looking and they're still a league above the texans yeah slayton and wandell robinson i mean wandell robinson everybody's wandell's the him. guy yeah, they, they seem to be pumping him up, but I haven't seen, you know, it, he's, anything. He's mid. Start. He's like Sterling Shepard 2.0. Yeah. And, of course, the defense. Uh, well, Connor's excited about the, the Giants. I'm not as excited, but, yeah, I mean, I'm not. But I don't fault you for playing. They're definitely better than the Detroit defense. And definitely better than the Texans. Let's mm-hmm. move on. The New Orleans Saints at the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a 40 and a half over under. And the age old question, which team in yellow is going to win? One of those is gold, but it's close enough. <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, This is going to be in Pittsburgh. So 39 degrees, 8% chance of rain, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds. Okay. Um, Andy Dalton. Um, you're not starting Kenny Pickett, so let's don't even look that direction. But Andy P- Dalton, what, how do you feel about him? No. I really tried to think of situations in which I would play him, and they didn't end well. I'm not starting yeah. him. I don't even know if I'm starting the Steelers guy, honestly. I feel like this is going to be one of those ugly defensive run-the-ball games. Oh, there's one Steeler that I, that I, I would absolutely recommend, but we're not going to get to him yet. Um, I know who with he Naji, is. N- Naji and Jalen, um, I, the running backs, I would not. Uh, I would cease fire on them this week. There's been talk about uh, Jalen Warren getting more involved. Let's do what that does. Either one of them. So right now, it's it there. It's very difficult to play either one right now. You know, coming out of the bye. This is whenever teams make. Change. So let's just go ahead and just cease fire on those guys. Um, the running backs, of course, for New Orleans is Alvin Kamara. So keep you, of course, you're him. Wide receivers, of course, Chris Olave. You're shooting on him. Jarvis Landry. No, there's no reason even. Um. It's just he hasn't done anything to prove it yet. Um, the wide receivers for uh, the Pittsburgh, though, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, um, those guys are ones that I think they're both flex-worthy. Let's see what happens without Chase Claypool, Clay, Claypool being there. So I think it's uh, they're coming off Clay's their bye. Claypool is no longer there, which also opens it up for Brian's favorite Steeler, his guy. Yeah, the Muth of the, yeah, the Muth. The yeah. Muth of the Friar. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah, Fryermuth. I think uh, he's been getting like seven to eight targets um, per game, and now without Claypool there, it's going to be up. So that's elite usage. 
so, so just even with that, even though the New Orleans is the the hardest on tight ends, that usage I I think gives uh, the start them. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, uh, the defenses. Um, yeah. Uh, well, hang on. Let me let me think of let me think of one. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Alave. Holy mackerel! This is one thing we that I just want to make sure I mention quick that um, Minka Fitzpatrick not in. <laughs> That's great for Olave. That's great for Olave. Yeah, he, he's having a great game. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, uh, are you interested in the New Orleans defense or Pittsburgh? Yeah, Steelers because of uh, Watt being back. Okay, that makes. Sense. Yeah, and also Andy Dalton throws the. Uh, he does have a lot of turnover. So Andy yeah. Dalton be Andy Fulton. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, we can't top that. Let's move on to the next game. All right, I'm going to arrive. The Indianapolis Colts and the Las Vegas Raiders. Which team with soft, non-threatening uniforms will actually win a football game for once in their damn lives? Ooh, it's a 41.5 over-under with the Raiders as 4.5-point favorites. Let's do it this way. Let's make it real easy, okay? Because we don't need to an- a- analyze on this one uh, position to position. We can pretty much just say who – because there's things that are just obvious. Well, there's so- one guy I think we're both starting, and that's Michael Pittman. Uh, <laughs> uh, Michael Pittman. No, I, I'm I'm waiting. I'm I, I'm not starting any any Colts. Yeah, cause, but this uh, you're talking about any, a new any? coach. No, none. No, no, no. Not even Jonathan Taylor. I'm nervous about Taylor. I mean, if you have him, you're gonna play him because you no, know, you have him. The J I mean, trade put me in pain. I traded him away, bro, and I I I feel good. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Uh, but but what I'm but here's the thing is that talking about it's a new coaching staff. When I say new, I mean like, like you and I and everybody watching has coached more NFL games. Than this coaching staff has, right? You know, so the, the, this head coach has. and then the guy, and then again, the person calling out the sending the plays to the quarterback. You and I have sent out more play calls than this guy is doing it, right? So it, it's just it's not something I really wanted to be around. So I I would recommend uh, cease firing on all Colts if possible. If not if you're in a, if you're in a pinch, then yeah, I can see you doing Pittman. But uh, but but no, um, the running backs. I already talked about Taylor, and this is what I'm saying. You know, like so, Colts. I wouldn't do anything in the and on the Raiders. It would be Josh Jacobs and of course um, uh, Devontae Adams. Here's the question I have: Foster Moreau or Mac Mac Hollins? Do you have any interest in them with both Hunter Renfro and uh, No, because Walt I looked at going to IR. No, because I, I I looked at Moreau's usage and he wasn't doing too hot. He, he was he wasn't doing as good as he should for a pickup. There's no reason to think that that's going to change just because now Waller is on IR. He wasn't in the game before, so what you see with Foster Moreau is what you're going to get. I'm with you, Connor. Matt Collins, though, with Hunter Renfro out, you know, I mean, th- th- is that I mean, he had I think it was week two or week three. He exploded. He had an amazing. So do you, you think that, that explode? <laughs> nice. So do you uh, would you would you sh- uh, shoot on him then? Since you're all talking about exploding right now, um, would you explode on him? <laughs> no, I, he needs to prove to me first that it wasn't a one-time thing, and he's uh, a quality, you know, weekly exploder. That's not just something that happens once in a blue moon. I think if you're in a situation like um, I'm not down that bad. No, I is well. If Josh Allen isn't there, I would I would start Brad Collins over Gabe Davis. Jeez, okay. I would, I would, because Gabe Davis hasn't done crap in the last couple of weeks. Live your truth, girl. Yeah, and then you're talking about putting in a backup quarterback. Uh, defenses? Are you interested in any of these defenses? Not really. Yeah, me either. Yeah, let's move on. The Dallas Cowboys are blowing up against the Green Bay Packers in the Revenge Game Toilet Bowl Edition. Hey, hey, easy now. Um, uh, Fox is calling it America's Game, isn't game this, of the Week. Isn't this America's an, Game of the Week? It, America's Toilet Bowl Game of the Week? Uh, I, well, no, because they're not playing in the Toilet Bowl. They're playing in Green Bay. Oh, America's Game of the Week. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be 36 degrees, 2% chance of rain. And this is what the actual forecast says. Intervals of clouds and sunshine. How nice, right? Yeah. 5 to 10 mile an hour wind. Yeah, it doesn't make you feel good. Uh, what's the over-under on that one? 
Tyler. 44 with the Cowboys as faux pas favorites. You agree with that? I think that's a lot of fours, and it's kind of weird because their quarterback's number is four. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Dak is, yeah, not not Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, so um, so let's talk about the quarterbacks, Dak and Rodgers. Any of those guys you're interested in? Uh, I'll probably start Dak. I don't think yeah. I would start Rodgers. Correct. What a, I, I, in fact, it would be very difficult for me to start any uh, any type of Green Bay players right now against the Dallas defense. It's been the yeah. state of how Green Bay is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, with you I, I might start Aaron Jones in the flex. A.J. Yeah, Dillon but, in the flex. But Aaron Jones is, is dinged up. Look what he did to you last a, week. A.J. A. Dillon in, 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 in the flex then, maybe. Uh, okay. I, I, I would be I would be more on that. Yeah, definitely 12. But I'd be more on A.J. Dillon than I would be Aaron I No, I, just, I, I agree with you. But, yeah, that's that's it. That's the only Packer. We're not starting the Packers kicker. Fuck Mason Crosby. We're not start. We're not starting the Packers defense. No. Uh, we're definitely look. We all know that you're you're starting Pollard if you have him. You're, what about you're, Tonka? What about uh, Tonka? Uh, I would I would start Tonka just because tight ends are hard to come by. Yeah, but very risky. Very. It's risky. a very risky move, but there yeah. is there is the upside of a high floor, which just shows you how bad the Packers are. Yeah, uh, uh, so Zeke, Zeke and Pollard. Yeah, and I would have a contingency plan for Zeke in case he doesn't play. Yeah, I agree. Well, I agree with you. Um, CD Lamb, Michael Gallup, Alan Lazard, uh, Christian Watson. Of all those, of those guys, who are you starting? Uh, C Lamb, Gallup, and probably uh, isn't Lazard banged up again? No, I think he's back though. He's back, but I th- I'd put I'd start Watson ahead of Lazard. Okay. Well, you said that. You, okay. Well, that's weird. Yeah, we, we we were saying earlier that you wouldn't start any Green Bay Packers. I know that, the guy yeah, that contradicts itself a lot. Okay. 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 Wow. All right. That's that's a uh, loophole. Um. This, but C D Lamb. Uh. Thinks think he's gonna be a wide receiver too. Yeah. I don't know. Just hasn't done what, what I hope he would do. Michael Gallup, uh, he's kind of a boomer bust kind of guy. So I'm with you on that. And of course, I, I'm very strong. I, I, the, I'm I, busting I, on a boom. I really don't like the Green Bay, uh, in the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I feel uh, like they all robbed us because we see the uniforms and we're like, oh, it's supposed to be good offense. And they were yeah, like, that's exactly. not what that is. That's right. 100%. And Dalton Schultz. Um, Dalton Schultz, because of the state of the tight end. Uh, he's you know uh, you, he's definitely startable. Tight, tight end two, warming is real. Tight yes, tight end two with gusts of tight end one in there, so, but a dangerous tight floor. end change. Yeah, tight end change. Uh, but and the only defenses I'm concerned about, I would I would shoot on on this one, Dallas. Yeah, let's move on. Speaking of moving on, two teams that need to move on: the Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams playing in the NFC best game of the week it's going to be the 39 and a half point over under with the rams as two point favorites yep it's a dome game but uh dome so game. No, nothing about the weather um the quarterbacks this is easy too um matthew stafford is not going like we already talked about that so um we're looking at wolford you know so wolf wolford and so i would not uh no don't he's even look not going to be wolfing around this is going to no. be the the coop cup and the higby show and that's that's it folks that yeah that's it for the Rams. 100 percent. what about yeah. the kicker now let, let, let me ask you well uh, well it's a dome so yeah of course yeah okay yeah yeah um kyler murray now he might not play if uh, he doesn't play do you would you shoot on the rams defense you know, this this might not make sense, and it's not logical, and I understand if you laugh at me, but I am simultaneously more excited for the Cardinals' offense and more excited for the Rams' defense to score points for fantasy if Kyler Murray starts. Hmm. Because okay. I don't think that Colt McCoy is going to do as much as Kyler Murray, but he probably will turn the ball over less. He just Because Kyler Murray generates offense, he just turns the ball over a lot. Okay. So you can still like you can start a defense to get him, and you have you have a like a pretty safe bet at getting points 
Whereas you start Cole McCoy, he he's he's probably not going to get sacked as much. You know, he probably won't fumble the ball as much. So, you know, picks is probably give and take, but he still has less probability to turn the ball over than Kyler Murray. Yeah, the running backs, uh, James Conner. I would go and shoot on James Conner. Yeah, um, and, yeah, he's he's healthy, or at least he seems to be healthy. So let's go and do that. For now. Um, the running backs, um, I would not touch the running back room in and uh, and the Rams no. or even. They're going to be introducing Kyron Williams into that whole mix. So, you know, if uh, he's definitely somebody to roster, Kyron Williams, because he's young and they want to spark. And they already said, like, in the beginning, going into the season, uh, they were saying they were going to be using him quite a bit. But he got injured in the first play of the game. Now it's going to be his first game back. You know, it seems to be the year of rookie court, uh, running backs right now. <laughs> you know, with, with Brees Hall and... Uh, Kenneth Walker and Damian Pierce, so why not Kyron Williams? <laughs> you know, so well, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I I would roster him, but def, you know, definitely not not that would be the only one I would roster. It's exciting uh, why, though because we have cool jerseys in this game and in the next game too. Okay, uh, D, D Hop, of course, you can go and show. Hell yeah, him. Rondell Moore, uh, Robbie nah. Anderson. I would nah. fire on the guys. Yeah, especially if uh, Kyler Murray doesn't play. Yeah. Uh, Cooper Cup. Uh, yeah, you're always going to put him in. Allen Robinson, no. Or no. Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson hasn't scored a point. You and I have. Scored. I would. I would not roster. Je- I would roster. Uh, <laughs> I would roster. Um, you know, not Jefferson, but I would, I would roster. Uh, Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, uh, Connor, have scored just as many uh, for, uh, fantasy points as Van Jefferson. Je- Van nice. Jefferson has this year. Yeah, nice, so that's dude. nice. Uh, hey. What about the tight ends? Uh, we already talked about Tyler Higby. You we going? Yeah, he he's somebody that has a I think has a high ceiling. Uh, if uh, I think that's it, it for that game, bro. What about Zach Ertz? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll start Zach. I'll start Zach Ertz, D. Hob, James Connor, uh, Murray. Yeah, if you there plays. you go. There you go. You go. Yeah. What about the and nothing on the defense? Leaving the defenses alone. I'm I'm starting e- the Rams even, defense. What about Arizona's defense against Wolford? Oh, fuck no. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I, no, would. Uh, I would. I would. Yeah, no, I will. I will. I would. I, I will, would. bro. Yeah. I will. Yeah, yeah. So both of those guys are in play. Uh, both the defenses are in play. Um, if the especially if the starting defenses don't, uh, starting quarterbacks don't. Uh, okay. Don't this play. Yeah. this game is really special to me. Um, and not for the reason you think, but we're already in. And uh, let's 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 get these games in. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers and the Niners are playing, and they have two of the coolest jerseys in the NFL. I mean, the Niners just they have these awesome home game jerseys. They look like the fonts from a video game because it has the 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 <laughs> shadow, the shadowing on the lettering. Yeah. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And then the Chargers, they have the cool baby blue uniforms with the bolts. It's forty five and a half over under with the Niners is seven and a half point favorites, which is pretty interesting. Um, I mean, they're they look pretty good for a team that's four and four. I just saw an update that just came through. It says that quote unquote Jonathan it says Josh Allen is quote unquote set to be on the field Sunday against Minnesota. You don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what that means. Anyway. And Kyler Murray's gonna test his hamstring pregame and but McCoy is ready to start. Oh, I feel like um, Josh Allen has a better chance of starting than Kyler Murray. I think be on the field means he's going to be back up, dude. I'm telling you, I, I not as positive as you are, but I like, I love it, dude. I love the feeling. Uh, San Francisco, they're in San Francisco, so that's uh, 45 degrees, 11 percent chance of rain, five to ten mile an hour winds. Okay, so um, this is a game. This, dude, Connor, let me ask you. Here, okay, I just gave you the weather forecast. Let, I want you to give me a forecast. A forecast that all fantasy football players, every single one of them, has been wondering. Wondering, wondering, wondering this forecast. So please help us out. When? When is Christian McCaffrey going to get hurt? I mean, I don't want to put evil out there and get the man injured. What but... does your gut say, man? Come on. You're not putting evil out there. I'm asking you a question. I'm honestly scared that because uh, Bombada hasn't. I'm, I'm I'm honestly scared that he is a league winner and he's going to win people their leagues. That's what I'm scared of at this point. Okay, so you don't think he's going to get injured? Man, this is one thing that I've noticed. Cooper Cup hasn't been fucking injured since Matthew Stafford has been in. Cooper Cup used to get injured all the time. 
But Matthew Stafford is really cool with Cooper Cup, so Cooper Cup probably has more of an incentive to play. I'm, I'm wondering if when Jerry Goff was quarterback, if Cooper Cup just didn't care and he would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm injured. I'm not fucking playing the rest of the, you know. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. about that. I'm thinking like, I'm not, not to besmirch his name, you know, but maybe it's like, eh, I'll just work out next year like I'm still getting paid, you know. But it's like now... So I, I don't know, maybe like, you know, M- McCaff McCaff, he has a chance at a Super Bowl this year. He, they're going to win the division. The Seahawks are only uh, the, six, the the two games behind the Seahawks. They can still totally win the division. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be this game. I think it's going to be this well, game. Well, I, I hope that it's a non uh, – it doesn't hurt at all and it doesn't hinder his career, but you're correct because I'm playing against him. It doesn't make sense not logical he's been hurt every year every season every season has been hurt i understand what you're talking about like maybe mailing it in there's been talk about that with about with Kadarius tony uh but um my feeling is that the uh that the san francisco is known for one for one thing they like to run the ball and their their starting running backs always get hurt because of the field because of the turf correct Correct, and now they're playing in San Francisco. Okay, I mean, so this is what I'm telling you, man. And they're using McCaffrey a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot more than they did before. It just, dude, it just looks like it's just only a matter of time. And I'm thinking it just seems like this would be the game. Why? Because he's set up to explode. I mean, he's set up to have an incredible game. The Los Angeles Chargers is one thing they can't do, and, and the one thing they can't do is stop the run. Okay, now they got Christian McCaffrey just scored like bajillion points, like you know, b- right before the bye week, right? And so it looks like it's set up perfectly for him to explode. And anytime you see that stuff like that in fantasy football, what happens, Connor? What happens? Oh, you get fucked. Yes, yes. The, I mean, this is whenever like you go to sleep, like just Christmas, like Christmas uh, Eve, man. You're asleep. Going like, man, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to see all those points from Christian McCaffrey or X player, you know, and then they pop. So I think that's where I'm coming it from. It is on a that. prime time game. So I'm telling you, dude, it's all lined up, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Um, I would, I would cease fire on Justin Herbert. Jimmy Garoppolo, I would go and shoot on because he, well, you know, um, he is doing all right. I'm and, shooting uh, on Debo. I'm shooting on Kittle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, Debo, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I would go and shoot on, but I would temper my expectations. Austin Eckler, of course, Christian McCaffrey, we already talked about it. Josh Palmer is the wide receiver one in in Charger land. So they're going to need to throw the ball a lot, so, of course, go for it, you know. Um, the one that I am nervous about, though, is DeAndre Carter. Uh, I w- I'm not as bullish on him. I would cease fire on that. Um All right. And then, uh, so Brandon yeah. Ayuk, how how you feeling about Ayuk? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and shoot on Ayuk. Okay, uh, I I get agree on that. I get I get I could get behind that. But again, I'm looking at flex, a flex. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd flex him in. Okay, we already talked about George Kittle, uh, Gerald Everett. Last one, Gerald Everett. Ooh, yeah, because they're shorthanded and tight ends are as well. Yeah, well, he didn't do too well last last week. Whenever yeah. it was the same situation, but he's and it's against a tougher defense. Man, temper those expectations. Yeah, he's startable, but temper those expectations. Um, and the defense is no on Chargers. Yes, on the 40. Yeah, I agree with that. I All agree right, with that statement. Let's move on to the last game. Last game, the NFC least matchup. The Eagles, 8-0, eight, eight and o, are going to get to go another game without having to play a good quarterback because they're going up against the Commanders with Taylor <laughs> Small Whitey Heineke, who, funny story. So this is a, this oh, is a true story. So I posted a video way back in the day because Heineke had the same trainer as... Uh, who? No, yeah, as Ku and as Carson, as Chris Carson. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I pretty much, some guy on Instagram, like, looked at my story and he was like, oh, dude, you're right. And I was, and he was like, he sent me screenshots. He was like, I want to talk shit to Tyler Heineke. And, like, Tyler Heineke pretty much, like, 
took it like really badly and like said like fuck you like you asshole and all this shit and i'm like man that's funny because heineke plays like trash so he's also just like a he 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 can't stand uh being shit talk they're they're gonna they're gonna lose bro they're gonna lose bad to the eagles it's gonna be a blowout yeah i agree so um so real fast let's just go through it jalen hurts of course taylor heineke no um and then of course uh what how are you feeling about any of the running backs in this game uh, other than Miles Sanders, and Miles Sanders, of course, you would go ahead. Of course, on him. I feel like that's the only guy. Yeah, yeah uh, I agree. unless maybe if you're in some crazy league where return yards count, you know what? Then I might actually see a pathway for Antonio Gibson. Okay. Yeah, our league does, by the way, fantasy. Our does. League. It's a cool yeah. league. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wide receivers: Terry McLaurin, um, yeah. AJ Brown. Uh yeah, um, uh, AJ Brown's locked and loaded, bro. You you gotta start him if you have him. Uh, how you feeling about Devonte Smith? I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, last time in uh last time we play, he played against Washington, which was in Week Four. He uh, scored extremely high, summit. So I would recommend yeah. to go ahead and shoot on him just because of that. I um, mean, just just because if you look at his uh, scoring, he doesn't do well against like the hard defenses. But the the easier ones, he does pretty well. The only one that he didn't do well against, uh, as far as an easy defense, was Houston last week. But I think it's because they didn't need to. Um, and this one, I could see them doing that, you know, incorporating Devontae. So I like Devontae for as a wide receiver too. Definitely a high flex option. Uh, we already talked about Curtis Samuel, uh, Terry McLaurin. I, um, Heineke seems to be throwing to him a lot, so he's definitely he somebody does. He can start, yeah. He can start with confidence. Uh, the tight ends, Goddard, yes. Logan Thomas, no. That's pretty easy. That is pretty easy. I'm not. I'm, and, I'll start the Eagles defense. Oh yeah, the defenses. Yeah, yeah. Eagles yeah. defense and um, and the uh, no on the Washington defense. Even though Chase Young is uh, could be back. Yes. First. Okay. Back. All right, I think we did it. We Let's did it, land man. This soul plane. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible. Yeah. It's so, great uh, if you if you pregame. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 You do have to load up. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for everybody for watching. <laughs> yeah. If you if you enjoyed the content, okay. You know, please go ahead and make sure to like and subscribe. Click that bell because we do all different types of shows. We we do the biweekly shows. Uh, we do uh, the um. The shorts, and we also do the uh, sniper episodes whenever news breaks. So make sure you get that notification. I want to make sure and thank our sponsors, our supporters, um, sports host app, and high volume music radio. You know, make sure and check out Connor's book. You know too much on Amazon and on high volume music radio. Make sure and check out my show, uh, Drive Time Sports with Charlie and Brian. That's every Thursday from four to six. So on behalf of Connor, the Gut Marshal, and me, your humble MC, Brian the Mugo uh, Baldwin, I want to thank you for watching. It's time for parting shots. What's your parting shot, Connor? Suck it, haters. The Strohs won the fucking World Series. That's what I wanted to use my time for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, there case, was in a... case I got any haters off, off guard, that was Dude, worth it. Everybody did not want the... The only people that wanted the Astros to win were like... Houstonians. Us. To, 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 <laughs> yeah, to, to quote one of our fellow teachers from Sessions Music, H Town versus all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, yeah, and uh, my parting shot, my parting shot is look, at, it's uh, trade deadlines are upon us. That's right? that's that's a good one. Okay, yeah. So make sure and look to see what you're going to do. There is no tomorrow. <laughs> okay, now's the time to start trading. Now's the time to start getting things moving. Yeah. Because yeah, because it's I, I know in our Freedom League, uh, it's November nineteenth is the deadline. So that's next Saturday, I think. You know, so uh, so they're coming up. Make sure and do them right, and don't waste time. This is not the time to waste time on stupid trades. All right, always put out your best offer. Don't trade uh, trash for treasure. You know, make sure they're even, make sure it's trades that help out each other. You know, make sure, you know, love, love each other when you're trying to trade. Don't screw each other over. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's possible. It's possible to do it that way. Yeah. But if you are going to, if you're going to do that, if it's somebody you don't like, uh, this is another thing I would say. It, don't be afraid to trade with somebody if you don't like, but if you don't like them, they unplug their team. Okay. <laughs> okay so there you go. How about that, Connor? How, how about that for, for advice? Is that, is that Connor worthy? Well, you have the power to dis to to veto it if you think I'm um, unplugging them. And just like they have the power to, to decline the trade, but if it ends up being an unplug, I don't know, man. Dude, if it's if it's 
if it's something that makes sense, I'm not. I don't jump in to say no. I'm going to veto it because that's not good. You know, that's not going to be fair. Let no, me let me ask sense. you this: do you, do you think Fournette for Jamal Williams is fair? Um, yeah. If the, if the person will take it, I mean, it, it, it's it seems like it. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's because it's not it's not it's not Singletary. For Patterson. <laughs> yeah, but Patterson okay. didn't do very good this week. Singletary did do way better than six points. That's fine. Uh, who knows? I don't know. I don't know that answer. I'm gonna yeah. track Singletary's progress for the rest of the year just to make sure that I'm I'm vindicated in the aftermath of that trade. There was no trade. It wasn't even accepted. Trade proposal. Yeah. It's it's just, it's 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 theory. Okay. All right. All yeah, right. Anyway. As anyway, in- anyway, 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 yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and end this thing. All right, last line. Let's end this thing. Remember, everybody, in fantasy football, as in life, don't dream it. (laughs) Be it. (laughs) Good luck on your games, everybody. Hope you win. Hope everyone.